Today is Wednesday, November 22nd, 2017. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is our recap of Survivor Season 35, Episode 9. This episode was titled Fear of the Unknown. That was spoken by Ben later on in the episode. Oh, I missed that. You did? Yeah, I'm well, glad you caught it. I've been playing a game that deals with the unknown, so that resonated with me. Player Unknown Battleground. And I'm becoming more and more obsessed with it. It's a battle royale game. I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what's more powerful than that? What could break my focus on PUBG? I don't know. Survivor. Oh, okay. Well, that, <laughs> I couldn't think of a thing. <laughs> Okay. You've not come out of your room very uh-huh. often. Uh-huh. Hunger would bring you out occasionally, yeah. but uh, that's about it. Yes. So, yes, it deals with great unknowns, much like Ben was wrestling with in this episode. I had to scream, literally, well, I wear headphones repeatedly when I at the top of my lungs, like, help, help. And you finally heard me. I'm hanging onto this thing and... And it's about um, to fall, and um, I knew I couldn't hold it, and I was like, help, help, help. Wrestling with the unknown myself. <laughs> and then you calmly a said, battle of life I'm and death. coming. <laughs> I was like, oh, jeez. But you came to the rescue. The circle of death was closing in on me. Uh-huh. So <laughs> yeah. I just had to give that game up. Well, you're lucky that I like video games, or I used to. Mm-hmm. I don't have time anymore, but. Uh, I chose well. You did, so hmm. I, I understand when you say you you get all obsessed on it and you just, I know how that is. I've done it too. I, what was that yep. game I used to play all the time, Diablo? Yeah, we played Diablo. We played Half Tribes. Life, Unreal. Unreal Tournament, all yep. that stuff. We used yep. to have the big land parties and stay up all night and mm-hmm. play. Yep. Now you stay up all night and play online. I don't. You do. No, you stay up all night and play puzzles and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, my puzzle, my jigsaw puzzle is crashing. So we're it's like not way, so much. way off topic. I know. I know. What? How did we get here? Unknowns dealing. Sorry. With unknowns. Sorry. No, yeah, no. Okay. It's, it's. See, I'm bringing it. I'm just bringing the circle back. Good, it's about good unknowns. Good job. Good job, baby. Yep, and definitely there were some unknowns to deal with. But before we get to that point in the episode, let's talk about previously on Survivor, see what Probes had to say in the recap. There were two hidden immunity idols in play. Mike had one, and Ryan had another in his little pink shorts. You had the... (laughs) We had the strong seven plus Mike. Orders were followed in terms of the vote out, and Lauren was able to execute her plan to acquire the double vote, courtesy of the secret advantage that she discovered. And bingo, bingo, Bob's your uncle, Daisy's on the jury. Mike tells us there, there's no real big rewrites there. So that was just pretty straightforward recapping by Probes this time. No rewriting of history. Mike tells us that it's him and the group of seven, but he's out of the loop. He's not really sure what's going on, and that's a really bad sign. What are you tickled about? I just got lost the way you said pink shorts. I thought, I really need to buy him a pretty pink shirt because he won't know it's pink unless I tell him. And, uh, You've done that so before. You, uh, that's I, not It's not. That's pink. not. Uh, yeah, you have. I didn't get you a pink shirt. Yes, you did. It wasn't really pink. It was pink. The people at work told me it was pink. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> I said, it's not pink. It's a shade of red. That was your answer when I came home it's and asked you why you gave it's me not a pink a shirt. True pink. Stacy doesn't like pink, if you hadn't gathered that. Well, I learned. You we've would done not this. even we've, let We've, we've done this so many pink, times in the show here. I know, but I just They teach you in psych class that they've done the studies. I think I'm getting a pink shirt. 
and they paint rooms pink, and it makes people passive. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't like pink. I just have no use for it. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, see, I think it's silly. Mm -hmm. It's not about gender or anything like that. Now I'll have to wait a while because you'll be (laughs) suspicious. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So what did you think about Mike's story? He's out of the loop, but he's got to throw some more healers under the bus here to to win himself a slot. I'm so confused about Mike. I don't want to jump to the end, but I'm just confused this episode with Mike. I just, uh, I thought he was playing Well, let's not good, play squirrel. Let's sort of focus on I, the temporal I'm, I'm squirrely. aspect. Yeah, you're very squirrely I'm today. very squirrely. It, that uh, Can't hold particular focus. medicine that I take, you know, when I have an issue, mm-hmm. makes me squirrely. I have trouble keeping my focus. Yes. So okay. I had to take that today. Back on track. Squirrely. It's the beginning of the episode. Yes, sir. Mike is telling us about how he's working hard to find a way into the seven and he's following orders but mm. he's always out of the loop and they're telling him who the vote's for and that's got him unnerved at the same time he's breaking ties the, and he's ready to throw cole and joe under the bus explain the point in telling those three people you had ryan lauren and ben were were there when cole was doing all that so they already knew that what mm-hmm. was his point of saying it in front of them and and obviously he was giving the information to Ryan in case he didn't know. I don't understand why. I believe you answered your own question in the course of asking it. So Why? It was for, it was for Ryan's benefit. Why? Well, he's just trying to find another way in. He's looking for options. Mm. And he's got... it. It's actually a really good play in that sense because he's got Ben and Lauren to back him up on what he's saying and what he's sharing. And he might be able to give some new information, although... <laughs> granted of limited value to Ryan, but he may be able to provide some new aspects, some new insights there. But everybody already wants Cole out. Yeah. Well, you didn't. You wanted Joe out. Well. And then some others did, too. But I wanted Cole out. But you, yes, you got a vote off point. I (laughs) did not, as usual. (laughs) Chrissy joins them uh, after that discussion has taken place, and she is happy because it's a new day. But you know who's happier? Lauren. Lauren. Lauren is happier. She's just tickled pink. I worked it in again. <laughs> that she was able to pull off that big play. She she seems to be presenting it like something significant's been done, but she just simply acquired the vote. She hadn't acted on it. And I, I understand there's a degree of difficulty in doing that, although, oh, yeah. as we discussed... As we discussed. And she should be proud of herself. But, you know, I, I'm not sure how good it is if she continues to ask Ben just to double check with, now you hadn't told anybody, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and she was looking for another pat on the back, too. So she had to recount the whole thing again. Yep. Then Ryan tells Devin he has the idol, even shows it to him. Be and specific, though. I have an idol in my pants because it's really... Yeah. It was about what's in Ryan's pants this episode, for sure. Yep. And I'm afraid... Ryan's pink pants. I'm afraid it's the beginning of his undoing. Mm, Maybe. His guess what's in my pants game. (laughs) He tells us he had to tell his boy Devin, because Devin will never tell, and he depends on me. He trusts me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that was a mistake on Ryan's part, not to tell Devin so much, but... To let Devin think that he hasn't told anybody else. Now, and he couldn't fist bump. Assuming he could not fist bump. Well, that bothered you. It didn't bother me. But um, I still can't tell if he and surely Chrissy talked to him about it after Chrissy would have figured it out that he had got. Is it it. to Ryan's advantage to have that discussion with her? I don't think so. Not necessarily, but. he may have I still discovered. think she could have figured it out and asked him about it, and I don't know that it would do him any good to lie to her. Well, certainly not. Yeah, yeah, she would. Get and especially it. Would catch since him in that. JP could have seen something and just pretended he didn't. So anyway, they never followed up on that, so we don't know quite how that went down. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, Brian tells us that uh, he and Devin are a good duo. 
And Devin's thrilled because nobody knows. Nobody mm. suspects that they're a duo. That gave you a, a warning right there that something was going to happen with that. It did. I think you're I engaging in a little hindsight bias, but... Whatever. Okay, day 22. A word challenge. You got to swim out to a ladder. Pretty high ladder. Hmm? Yep. Jump off the ladder. Well, they go to the dive platform down first. Or pull yourself down. And the ladder's on a platform. To the ladder. Yeah. Dive down and untie a buoy or a buoy. And then uh, swim that over to another platform. You got to get three of those. And each of those have keys on them, which allows them to unlock the last two. And then someone has to shoot those into the baskets. I wonder if Five Ben's baskets. a smoker. You wonder if Ben is a smoker. He had trouble staying under to, to get to untie it. Hmm. This is day 22, I believe, yeah. at this point. So I think Good he's probably got his lungs cleared, back. So. Yeah. Well, I was just curious because he didn't stay down and Chrissy did. No, but he was going. He was moving really well. I mean, he was. He did a great swim. Had a great entry and a really powerful swim. He was ahead of her at that point. Jumped into the water ahead of her. And then she got ahead of him. He got out of breath. Is where I was going with that, Uh, which is easy to do when you're pushing really hard. Well, but she did the same things. And I tell you what was just a little bit different from the get go. She used the rope to pull herself down, so she went down quick. Mm-hmm. And he didn't do and direct, that. Direct, yeah. He dived first, then grabbed the rope, and you would think so anybody it, who'd watched watched enough Survivor would. As long as you weren't so that. amped up that you were kind of tunnel vision yeah, and your adrenaline yeah. pumping. Okay, and uh, I was really surprised that Chrissy pulled ahead there. What but, do you What did you think about the reward? What they were going to get? Yeah. Well, awesome, the tour. of course. Tour on the yacht, and then some sandwiches. Sandwiches, and chocolate, and wine, cake. chocolate cake. They always give them alcohol. Yeah. So you never know what might happen. That's true. You can get different results that way. But uh, oh, we didn't give the teams: Chrissy, Cole, JP, Joe, and Mike, and Ben, Devin, Ashley, Ryan, and Lauren. Mm-hmm. Then Ashley, uh, Ben got behind, but Ashley made up a little bit of time. Yeah, she Not did enough, really well. Yeah. But she Cole made up a little really quick, time. so it was it was hard. Well, but. that's to be expected. Yep, he did well. But and that's Ashley's thing too in the water. So, but he didn't do as well as JP. No, JP, JP showed them all up. Awesome. Yeah, he went off the ladder and didn't come back up for a breath. He just went on down. And <laughs> you and know, he thought it. that out and he planned to do uh-huh. that. Yeah, I wanted to see if someone was going to jump. I mean, dive from the ladder, but everybody jumped. Mm, yeah. Because it looked like if you dove right, you probably could go in. Yeah, but that's kind of scary to dive, to dive from that height, from that yeah, height. And, and get the entry right. But but you could. it would take you right down to it, I'm pretty sure. I think it'd take you a lot further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to come back up, probably. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it, that was impressive. Joe was really impressive. He was sinking those baskets. I liked Ben's granny style. He got going. He caught up with Joe, tied him at three, and then uh, he lost his momentum, and Joe finished him off. So Joe had told us back when they had that other basket shooting challenge where he said that he let Devin do it, although he was really good. We got to see just how good Joe was. He did excellent. In well, that but challenge. Mike told us he was he had practiced throwing balls too, so he didn't get to show off there cuz what? Well, I just don't think it was the same. There's a difference between hiring a trainer and working for a month or two. He tossed a lot of balls and, he and said a to. lifetime of playing basketball, which mm-hmm. is probably where Joe has been. Okay, well, the uh, Red Tribe wins and the are immediately off to the yacht. Yeah, boom, just like that. That was pretty awesome. And you you send uh, to the yacht two heroes and three of the healers. I thought that was interesting. They mm-hmm. all got to go on the reward, and I thought, wow, that could affect the immunity challenge for the people who got to eat. That's exactly what Cole talk, told us, too, was yep. he was thrilled because he needed that to power up for the immunity challenge. Chrissy, she was excited, too, to get the meal, said it was priceless, but she was just really glad to be there to be in, to help be in control of the conversation. No, she said to control it. Uh-huh. I don't think she controlled it, per se, but 
But anyway, maybe, maybe not. I didn't see it. That was cool to have the dolphins out there yeah. following the boat. That got Mike excited. He was happy to see yeah. some of that. Joe told us in a quick confessional that he was definitely wrestling against the Alliance of Seven, and he had no control. And you get to see some of what Joe's been like as he's there on the yacht looking for a clue. <laughs> I love it that he just did it right out in the open, you know, cut the cake open, looked underneath it. Made a joke about it. Yep, that made a good. joke. Just and went around looking under everything and then made the joke about it. Smart the, to do that. The idol being underneath the boat. I thought, oh, that's cute. But if it were underneath the boat, he wouldn't have said a word. He'd be underneath the boat. Yeah. So The yacht cruised by the camp, the tribe camp, and then they blew the horn there on the yacht. So several of them came out. Everybody and, but Lauren came yeah, out, came and, out mooned and mooned them. them. <laughs> that was cute Ryan, mm-hmm. Devin, Ben, and JP mm. All mooned them No, JP was on the yacht Oh, I was, was thinking Ashley. it was JP You got Ashley confused oh, was with it? JP I, right. <laughs> Oh, okay Well, I knew it was somebody else Ryan tells us he's all about building relationships While they're off uh, He would have preferred to be on the yacht But he drops his secret on Ben as they're talking, and he tells Ben the best scenario for going forward is in my pants. He yep. Just, he just loves saying that. in my pants. I, I'm well, pretty sure I'm going to go out on a limb and make a prediction that we're on the downward trajectory I, of I feel that Weasel too, Ryan right now. Right now. <laughs> Things are unraveling. It's my USB, but I'm, I'm getting that feel, too. Yeah. Is that they're... Um, they're starting to show things because Ryan's not going to make it. Or that's, there's that's reason what I to think believe might that be happening. Yeah, that things are unraveling for the weasel there. Yeah, I don't think he's a weasel, but that's his words. I know. Yeah, I'm aware he called himself a weasel. Okay. I didn't necessarily agree with it then either. I think he's just playing. I don't know. It's stuck for me now. I see weasel I every know, time I see him, especially in profile. He's the one that planted that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, and Joe tells us, well, he's just going to try to stir the pot. Yeah, well, Ben Ben was thrilled, though, that Ryan had shared that with him because, one, it told him that Cole did not have it, and so they can take that opportunity to get rid of Cole if he loses immunity this, as soon as he does. And he tells us he's going to need to keep his eye on the weasel. I think they're all giving Ben too much information. Yeah, he's got something going for him where... He does, and he seems to have a lot of different avenues he can go. Yep. So I think... He's got a good web set up. And I'm not sure he has a target on him other than just the, the, mm, he the existing healers. He, yeah, but the, I mean within the minority his, alliance certainly targets him, but yeah, they also but, know better, too. Yeah, but within the seven. Yep, that was a really neat shot between the octopus and the sea snakes there that they were observing before they cut to Joe, like you said, mm-hmm. who was telling us he was never going to give up. Then he goes out and starts digging again, like his... I think he was just trying to start something, make them think. Well, he still... Make them think he's He's not sure something. that... That they didn't find it there yeah. under the tribe flag, so well, he's back digging there. What else has he got to do? Mike yeah. tells us that Joe he finds Joe strangely entertaining. So the shoes on the other foot a little bit with regards to their relationship now. Now yep. Joe's become an amusement, whereas he used to be Mike used to be his target. Well, he is definitely not amusing Chrissy and Ashley. Especially not Ashley. Yeah, Joe's plan is to wind him up again. So he falls back to this plan, but he didn't have the idol to draw the fire and then take the heat. I don't understand exactly what he's doing. Why are you doing that? I didn't understand his or Mike's gameplay this week. I just didn't get it. Yeah, from, from... what I can see, he's trying to encourage them to make him the goat to the point of actually telling Ashley she's a goat, which in turn plants the idea that, no, Joe, you're the goat because you're goofing up and you're aggravating everyone. Yeah, but I can't stand and you and I can't keep you around. Well, it's working for Ben. Well. <laughs> he loves Joe. <laughs> it's like, Joe, everybody hates Joe, therefore I Joe's love Joe. Joe's his meat shield. Yeah. But... 
Yeah, but Oy. Chrissy tries to come to Ashley's defense a few times, and then she eventually gets so annoyed with the uh, with Joe, especially when well, he, he tells her. He knows how to do that. Well, and he he devalues Chrissy, and that's enough. She's she's like, okay, I'm getting out of here. He tells her he doesn't care whatever it is that she thinks, or whatever it is she has he to say. He knows how to get to people. I'm not sure that's a good. He sees weakness quality, really but, quickly. Uh, yeah, it depends mm. on what you're doing, but yes. And I don't disagree with Ashley that, you know, Joe's kind of a bully when he does that. Mm-hmm. And uh, he he really knows how to get under their skin. I'm sure that could be a tool at some point, but I still didn't understand what advantage that was going to give Anytime him. you can make someone angry and they just start swinging wildly like that, you... You make it so that they're not thinking logically, and they, he's just trying to disrupt their operational thinking uh, yeah, process. Still, I don't, I don't think it was that effective. Ashley tells us she's going to pitch that G- Joe goes home before Cole. Yep, he's a bully. Because obviously he's they've go. already agreed they want Cole out next. Mm-hmm. But uh, she changes her mind. She'd rather have Joe out. Okay, we go to day twenty-four. Ben and Devin are taking a hike. Yep, checking out some part of the island. Ben tells Devin he's been there before. It's the first time for Devin. Well, and Ben tells us he is aligned with Lauren, but he needed someone to come along with them. They need a Mm -hmm. third person. And because Ryan told him he had an idol, now he doesn't trust him. It makes him too dangerous. Great, Ryan. That's... Losing Ben. That did not help you. It hurt you. And Ben decides that Devin is a good guy, a solid guy, an A-plus kind of guy. Yep, he's got a good heart. And so Ben shares a secret. He tells Devin there's secrets of the seven that I'm going to drop on you here. And here's the first one. I don't think he said secret of the seven. Devin's in the seven. Ryan, yeah, he did. That was all part of it. You can go back and check. Ryan has an idol, he tells Devin. Now, we know that Devin knows that, but it is a, still a bit of a bombshell for Devin because Devin was thinking, hey, Ryan's not telling anyone else. He told Just me he wouldn't me. tell. He only trusts me, and yep. then he's like, oh, so Devin, no. my USB. <laughs> Yep, choked on it, didn't you? Tells us, tells us that things just got complicated. Tells us that things just got complicated. Choked on the gloat. Tells us that things just got complicated. Now he's got to rethink. So Devin decides that it's time to move on from the weasel and play the game with Ben. And I'm like, mm, yes, that's right. He just made a... he. He made a little sideways move there, but I think it's going to be a lot better for him. So I was very encouraged by this development this week. Anything else you want to say about that? Community challenge. Community challenge. This one was called Probe Squats. I guess it was after Jeff's brother. Yeah. So they have these bars across their shoulders, and they uh, custom fit each. They measured all of them and so that it would be a fair Mm -hmm. Um contest and it's good extra video on that this week yep yep and they're balancing that vase but i thought you know the leg muscles are going to give pretty quickly so if it goes too high it if they stand up too straight even before getting all the way uh fully standing up tips over that vase with the water and puts their fire out that's uh, sitting below them and if they go too low it trips a flag in the back so they've got to find the sweet spot and it's Evidently, it's pretty narrow range, and basically, it just hurts. Anytime you put muscles in a static, engaged position, they start to hurt pretty quick. Oh, yeah. yeah. Probst describes it as a new survivor torture test. (laughs) I thought that was, yeah, that was a pretty adequate one. Yeah, so it's an interesting endurance test. Were you surprised that Ashley was out first? Yeah, I didn't see that coming. I figured it would be, you know, Ryan. Yeah, we we both thought, wow, Desi would have done good in this. Mm. She's got those massive thighs yep. that, you know, very, very muscular. I thought either that or they would have given. Sometimes the bigger they are, they won't uh, take that kind of strain. The muscle will just give, give way. give them but, enough energy. But you would yeah. think she would be able yeah, to. Yeah, she looked like she was conditioned to handle it. Uh-huh. But in yeah. any case, yeah. she's not here. So, yeah, Ashley went out and then Dr. Mike shortly after that. Then JP, who you thought would certainly be I thought he was going to be, yeah. So, for me, the drama ramped. As soon as JP went, I was like, oh, no, this just got interesting. Who's going to beat Cole if JP's not in there? And then, boom, Devin's out. 
<laughs> Just like that. Who was it? Ashley did that too. She commented and said that Chrissy's form was perfect. Devin looked over. He's out. Joe looked over at Devin. Joe's out. <laughs> then boom, Ben's out. Uh, and then they cut back and it's 20 minutes total elapsed. So we're down to Chrissy, Lauren, Cole, and Ryan. Ryan's still in it at 20 minute mark. Yeah, that's that was pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. The people that were left, I thought Cole. That's when I why I didn't choose him. I thought that he could do well in the immunity challenge from the pictures. It's reasonable to think that any immunity challenge, there's a good chance that he could yeah, do well. Yeah, he could. And uh, but I thought he was due for a loss, so I took a gamble Cole. on him. Yep. Cole's well, blowing kisses to him, sitting over on the bench. Yeah. And then Ryan went out. So Cole was taunting him. That made me think that he's having a hard time with how he's no, getting Chrissy treated. No, Chrissy went out first. Chrissy went out, then Ryan went out. Uh huh. And then Cole. Right. And anyway, Lauren I was focused wins. on. I was focused on Cole blowing kisses at the folks that were mm-hmm. out over there. Well, I was like, yeah, you blow those kisses. I was stunned that Lose Lauren your won. Focus. That I did not see at all. I was amazed that she was still in there at the 20-minute mark, and then she ended up winning. That's why I said the drama really ramped up on this. I kept thinking, well, crap, there's no way that Lauren's going to win. So Cole's going to be immune again, and my plan is spoiled. But no, she won. Stunned me. <laughs> now Cole's in play, and I'm excited about the possibility. I was cheering for Cole to win. Cole's big plan? It's complicated. See if you can follow it. Hopefully, they target Joe. That was it. That was the sum total. That's what he had for us after 24 days. Okay, back at camp. Good job, Lauren. She gets congratulations from folks as they get back to camp after the immunity challenge. And Ben starts telling everybody how to vote instead of asking them how we should vote. Hmm. See, you jumped on that bandwagon with them, but I didn't really see it that way. He's, he well, said, it's what here's, he did. Here's, the, here's the plan and here's why. Right? Coal is the biggest threat. So we got to have coal in the mix. And then I don't we need to flush the idol if Mike has an idol. So that all made sense to me. I heard what I heard was Ben saying, here's a plan. But they're like, Joe, they thought Joe was more likely to have an idol. The they that you're referring to is Ashley primarily. Now, Ryan did agree with her. They were talking at the well. It was Lauren and Ben. Ashley and Ryan at this point when Ben was talking talking about how to split the vote in case there was an idol so they could flush Dr. Mike's idol if he had one, right? So that's really Ashley. Now, this is where Joe's plan was working to a degree. It was potentially going to backfire on him, but she really wanted to get rid of him. He had aggravated her to the point that that was the only thing that she could see. So, okay, let's say that that Ben only could see his one plan, Cole and Dr. Mike. As far as Ashley's concerned, the only thing she could see was Joe. So I I hear her saying that he's being a dictator, but I didn't hear her willing to go in a different direction or consider anything differently herself. It's just it wasn't her plan. I believe she was just trying to talk through and Ben wouldn't talk through was what she was saying. That she's trying to just ask questions and get answers. That like, was Chrissy why? saying that later. Why? That wasn't Ashley. I know. I'm talking about Chrissy. Okay. You, said Chrissy. Okay. I didn't hear that part. Uh, obviously. However, I did say Chrissy. And I and didn't she even, just wanted him to discuss. It wasn't a and just. And he wouldn't. Always, always be on guard when you hear someone say just. Yeah. No. It's usually a red flag. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, but okay. it wasn't okay, Ben. It wasn't. It wasn't about asking a question. She was making statements just like he was, and what was shared. I didn't see her acting any differently than Ashley. She. It's just the case of Party A wanted one outcome. Party B wanted a different I outcome. I don't see it. That, that way. didn't make Party A a dictator just because they're saying two different things. I believe they just wanted to be heard. And their opinions at least considered and not discounted and just told what to do. That's how they were feeling. Mm-hmm. And that's not a good good thing, any way you look Definitely at it. Definitely not a good thing. I just... I know, you didn't see it that way. Did not see it that way, that's right. And we have to just agree <laughs> to disagree on that. All right. Because I did. 
Okay. What else you got around that particular conversation? Well, Mike's talking to Ben. He's he's asked Ben, tell me who to vote for, and Ben whispers very quietly. So quietly, I'm sure Chrissy couldn't hear it, that he should vote for Cole. Yeah. But Mike flips on this. He says, I can't trust Ben. I've got to do something different. I've got to make a big move, which Propes loves. You can see, I I just imagine Propes watching a cut of this particular tape there in a tent on the island in Fiji going, yes, Mike's making big moves and you got to make big moves in Survivor. I didn't understand that. Just like we didn't understand the other, like Chrissy was trying to explain to Ben that other people were feeling steamrolled by him. That's information she's trying to feed him, and he he won't hear it. And Mike is... I thought he was defending himself, saying, I didn't steamroll anything. Well, no, I didn't think he was defending. I thought he just wasn't. He wasn't taking it in and hearing her. It had a distinct he said, she said. And I want to come back to that in Tribal Council, too, because there was something funny along those lines. Well, and I don't understand Mike. There were things I just didn't understand why they were doing. I didn't feel like there was enough explanation for me. It, It wasn't super clear, black and white, connect the dots kind of stuff. But it appeared that Mike... He's highlighting Ben as a big threat, and he's telling Joe, look, we can pull something off. We can do something. And basically what Mike was trying to do was Joe's plan when they took Alan out, is I'm going to get them so riled up that they can't help but vote for me. I'm going to play my idol, cancel out all their votes, and then we'll knock one of them out, and it'll be a wake-up call. And then it'll cause more cracks to form somehow. I'm with you in that it didn't appear to be solid logic, connect the dots, and you can see the outcome. You balance the books, and you can see how it comes out in Mike's favor. I didn't see that either. Yeah, I I just didn't. Didn't. What did you think about him whispering right off the bat to Joe to just trust me and follow my lead? I'd be nervous anytime somebody said trust me. And then, well, especially with Mike and Joe and their relationship. Mm -hmm. And if you watch closely, you'll see Joe starts the fast blinking, which is when he's uncomfortable. I think it's a tell of his that we've seen before. And his his eyes are just really rapidly blinking a couple times after after Mike says that. And so I think it made Joe uncomfortable. It would make me uncomfortable because I'd be... Wait what a is Mike going to try to do? Yeah, I know. What's Joe's, he doing, and is it going to backfire on me? Joe, yeah, much like how Desi felt, right? Yeah. Joe got a, a taste of his own medicine mm-hmm. in that regard. But Joe probably could pull it off. We know he's done it before, and he's doing a pretty good job even without having an idol to back it up. But Mike, yeah, Mike, not so much. And he points out the healers are the ones that are not a part of the whole round table thing. Well, I know Desi told us during her interview last week that there was a lot more that was argued about and was said about the whole round table the round analogy. Table and yeah. all of that that they really got upset about that we didn't get to see. Yep. Yeah. And Cole told us that no one was discussing gameplay with him. But why would they, Cole? You can't keep a secret. <laughs> I think of nothing else everyone had learned. Don't tell Cole anything that you don't want everyone to know. Yeah. I mean, even a Jessica was his closest ally, and I think he was probably genuinely attracted to her. And he still told her secrets. Because so, it benefited him. Even she wouldn't tell him anything else. Mm-hmm. Yep, Chrissy, when Propes asked her about the vibe back at camp, mentions the barrage of insults coming from Joe, and Mike tells us that he is disappointed in his tribe, that he tries to play with a high moral character, and that is not happening with this group of folks. And again, he's, he appears, best we can tell, best I can tell, he's trying to draw fire. He wants them to I, all vote for him. But it's a mess, like you said. I just did not get all that. Justify your vote by your gameplay. And I just thought, what? either they chopped all that up because there was so much information. Or maybe Mike's just that bad at drawing fire. It really did not 
click for me. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just me, but I didn't follow that. And what the heck are you doing, Mike? I'm just not following it. Lauren was confused. She said, you're digging your own hole. You didn't even need to be talking right now. Nobody was focused yeah, on you. Yeah, why are you even opening your mouth? Yeah. You didn't have to do that. Yeah, so, she said. And if, she likes Mike. Yep. She even she agreed with him. him. She's yep. in normal yep. life, what yep. you're saying. Yep. Absolutely, but this is Survivor, so. Then Joe are. points out, well, you know, after the healers are picked off, there's only three hustlers to four heroes. Four Hello. plus three. Yep. State the obvious, but it's, a, it's reasonable. It's worth saying. But Ashley talks about, well, that's not necessarily. You're, you're, you have to take into the accounts the relationships that have been formed, et cetera, et cetera. Here's where, this is what I was alluding to earlier. I believe Probst had a little bit of a indirectly created a mansplaining moment here at Tribal Mm. Council because he took what Ashley was saying about relationships and basically asked Ben the same question to get him to to provide what was essentially the same statements. But it seemed like... Explain Ashley. Yes, yeah. So he mansplained it for us a little bit there. Yeah, and follow your whole mansplain. Probes tells us that it's just chaos here in tribal council. People are talking after that amongst themselves. It wasn't one of the more active examples of that that we've seen before. But okay, if he says it's chaos, we'll go with that. I didn't understand when Ryan voted. He he said, well, I'm kind of shocked right now, but sorry, buddy. I thought... Who was huh? he voting for, right? That was your, your thought immediately. Well, I was pretty sure Which he was vote was vote this? Poll, but was there, were there multiple votes cast and we're only getting to see one round? Where, well, I thought maybe from? he did uh, change his vote and vote for uh, Mike or something. Since but when is he Cole's buddy? We haven't seen any evidence Mike's of that. Or any of the, yeah. Anyway, I still don't kind of know what he... I just felt like we just missed too much i'm gonna go with mike was playing big just like probes loves and that was Mm. just what that was the best mike could do in that context it totally fell short for me because i didn't understand it i didn't understand the things mike said when he played the idol i just i could understand it if at least mike voted for one of the seven Mm -hmm. then i would understand everything he was doing Trying to draw the fire so he could pop. What if at the last the minute? But he voted for he and Joe voted for Cole. What if at the last minute Mike got scared and went, "Oh, I better do what Ben said." I don't believe that, but I don't know what he was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Like I said, if he'd voted for Ben, then I would have understand what he was trying to do. But then you turn around and vote Cole. What was the point? Of all the other stuff. About Either, high moral character. Yeah. I just do not Drawing understand fire. that. I hope they explain it better later on because I just don't get Maybe it. it's like the early rounds on The Voice where it doesn't matter what we think. It only matters what the judge thinks. And Propes is the judge, so Mike is hedging his bets a little. It's like, if, well, if I don't win this one, I will have at least played big so that Probst. Probst will invite me back for another round of Survivor. Yeah, Probst didn't get, get a vote, though, for this round. But Chrissy and JP are the ones that voted two votes for Mike. Mm-hmm. I think maybe they talked before they voted. I saw um, Lauren and uh, Ashley whispering, mm-hmm. but... Um, Oh, you're saying you think that Chrissy and JP broke ranks? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that they wanted at least a couple votes for Mike Hmm. in case there were a couple votes for one of the seven. Yeah. In any case, Cole... But there could have been three, so... Cole is Hmm. now on the jury, so... Okay. Maybe you'll have a good Ponderosa video or something somehow, huh? And it looks like Mike goofed, like you said. That was all for what? Not sure. Not? Yeah. And now your idol's gone. You have no protection. The big question becomes, how long are these seven going to be able to hold together? Are they going to be able to do it two more times so that they can complete the pagonging of the healers? Well, okay. Was Jeff referring to Mike when he said those on the bottom of Alliance get desperate? No, he was not referring to Mike. Mike's not necessarily on the bottom of that alliance. So he's talking about whoever thinks they may be on the bottom of the seven. 
Now, if you've done a really mm. good job, everybody thinks they're on equal footing in the seven. But we know that isn't always the case. Well, and not and, that is. and next time on Survivors here to tell us that that does indeed appear to not be the case. So Probe starts off by saying the seven seem to be set in stone, but it may be crumbling. And we see, who is it, Lauren and Ashley talking with Mike and Joe and saying, hey, we need to talk. Okay, I'm not quite done with the vote yet. Okay. If, and this is what makes me nuts, if Joe, Mike, and Cole had voted together for Ben, Ben would have gone home. Well, only if they had all voted for Mike, right? No. You got to have they, enough. If they they voted. Um, You're losing your math there? Are you having a squirrel uh, moment? Well, uh, what I meant to say was if Mike had played it for Cole. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And right. had now he it's and make Joe more sense. had voted for Ben, he would be gone. Then three for Ben. Yep. But. I, like I said, it's just confusing the heck out of me that they voted well, for Cole anyway. So, what's the point? Okay, I think you circled okay. back to make your point again. I, I can't make my point. I don't. I don't have one. I can't find anything okay. else you want to say about next time on Survivor. Uh, mm, I I think Lauren might be uh, making a move too soon. Yeah. You would hope they could hold together to complete the pagonging, but it is it is tempting. And this moment where, like you said, Ashley didn't feel that she was being heard or Chrissy didn't feel she was being heard, then could, yes, help prompt some kind of backlash uh, against Ben in the seven. It seems odd that it would be Lauren, but we haven't been given enough information to think that's plausible yet. Well, what I find even stranger is that it's Ashley. If she thinks she's in the final four heroes, why is she jumping ship? Mm-hmm. So, obviously, somebody doesn't feel scared. Or maybe somebody's being a good double agent. And it could maybe. be Lauren and it could be Ashley. That's true. Yeah. And maybe they're just trying to give Joe and Mike hope and get information out of them. Yeah. How about a JSFL update? I can do that. We had have two people tied for first with 43 points. There were 12 people who lost their USB. 47 people lost a safe point. And now that was bold, having Cole safe. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> That's a really bold play. Congratulations to the 136 people who gained a vote off point, the not being me. Some of us just kept after it several yeah. weeks in a row until we got it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and the side challengers, Parker is still in first with 40, 40 points. Rick has 38. With 37, we have Brandon, Cole, Mike, Jeremiah, Jody, and Nina. 36, Jonathan. With 35, Drew, Kitty Cat, and Stacy. Mm-hmm. With 34, James and Shannon. And with 32, Iron Dave. Oh, it's in the basement alone now, huh? Yep. Uh-oh. Well, I'm confident my ascension has begun, so I'm just coming up the ranks here for victory. Uh, yeah, you just jumped right up there, didn't you? I did go up. You're only five points out of the lead. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All righty, then. Anything else? What did you think about the episode overall? Oh, I enjoyed it as always, other than it. I don't know if it's just me, because like I said, I'm a little little squirrely today, mm-hmm. but uh, uh but it it confused me. I still enjoyed it. It's Survivor, but it just I have too many questions, <laughs> and uh, and no way to get those answers. At least not. Don't think um, Cole will have all the answers. Not that immediately. I want. He won't have them, and he's not likely to have them all. And he won't have them tomorrow. No, because we have to wait till Monday <laughs> to right. do the interview. Yeah, here in the so. States, we're celebrating Thanksgiving tomorrow, and we'll get a chance to talk to Cole on Monday, and we'll get that out for you. So that means the next, out of our three episodes that we do every week, the next one will be the Listener Feedback Show. We're here. We will absolutely do a Listener Feedback Show if people send feedback in, right? That's yep. our plan. So yeah. you send it. We will put it together. We know people are crazy busy and got a, all kinds of things going on. Sometimes super fans find some extra time for their favorite show, though, and they send in feedback. 
So we're here. You send it, we'll put it together and get it out Saturday. The deadline stays the same. Noon Pacific time. You can call the voicemail lines 206-350-1547 or toll free 844-643-8737. You can record your own. That's the way to get the best possible audio quality. And some folks even do their own editing and put it together and they send really nice polished versions to me but you don't have to worry about that and you know it doesn't have to be polished i can clean it up and put it together for you if you say something you want me to take it out just say that and i'll take care of it for you you can also uh, write it up in an email and send it to us at joanne and stacy show at gmail.com and either joanne or i will read that into the show for you so we're looking forward to that like you said if you send it we'll do it no matter how many there are. We understand folks are busy, but uh, we'll probably be binge-watching a bunch of shows and playing games and enjoying that delicious dressing that you got cooked up. And Oh, yeah. Yeah. Greens and sweet potatoes. Mm-hmm. Those sweet potatoes smell good. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to say um, safe travels and have a wonderful vacation, Paul and Russ. Yeah. I'm envious. Have a great time. Yep. Happy birthday to my mommy who turns 90 on Friday. Happy birthday. Mm-hmm. And um, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And no matter what's going on in your life, we hope that you take a moment to be thankful for all your blessings. Yep. We're thankful I know for I am. having a show that we enjoy so much. And we're thankful for being able to share that with you guys and for you sharing back with us. I learned a long time ago to count my blessings not just one time a year, but all the time, and remind myself of that. And I certainly am thankful, and I think about how wonderful this community is and how much you guys have given us and how rewarding it is to put this together and share, share it with all of you. So have a, for those that are celebrating, have a happy Thanksgiving. Anything else? Nope. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a good one.